Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Coffee with Katie. I have my Christmas light cactus mug today. I love this mug so much. And I also have this shirt. I just have to tell you about it. I love this shirt. I've been waiting a year to wear this basically. It's Kentucky Fried Chicken and it says tender and mild sleep in heavenly four piece. Sleep in heavenly four piece box. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I love it so much. So today's video is going to be anticipated releases for 2023. Now, this is in no way a like comprehensive list of all of the things I'm going to be excited about for 2023, but these are the ones that I've collected over this past year that I've been interested in, and some of these aren't even guaranteed to come out in 2023, but as of now, they're saying 2023, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more than I'm excited about, so this might be like a part one situation, but regardless, I'll go over the list that I have as of now and talk about them and just kind of, you know, see what's coming around the horizon, get pumped about some maybe. It'll be fun. I'm gonna try to go in order based on when they're coming out. So like January, February, you know. I'm gonna try, cause I didn't do that last time and I think that's something I should do this time. So let me get to the first one. First one that I'm, <laughs> I feel like it's one of those things that I'm anticipating it, but I'm not like super pumped about it. I wanna continue to read these and I haven't read the most recent one, but I'm almost caught up. And that is the Wayward Children series by Shannon McGuire. And the next book that's coming out in January is Lost in the Moment and Found. And this is supposed to come out January 10th. I'm not sure what this is following. It says, welcome to the shop where the lost things go. If you ever lost a sock, you'll find it here. If you ever wondered about your favorite toy from childhood, it's probably sitting on the shelf. It's following Antoinette. I'm not sure if we meet her and where the drowned girls go, but that's the next one that I need to read before I get to this one. And I'm sure you guys have heard of this series, but you know, it's just kind of one that I'm steadily continuing. Some of them I really like, some of them are okay, but I wanna keep following it, you know? The next one coming out in January that I'm pretty excited about is Mysteries of Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson. This is kind of like a novella after A Sorcery of Thorn. So it's just kind of like, almost like a holiday special kind of a situation, like when you see those holiday special episodes in sitcoms or whatever. It kind of sounds like that. This is supposed to come out January 17th, and it says in this sequel novella, Elizabeth, Nathaniel, and Silas must unravel the magic trap, keeping them inside Thorn Manor in time for their midwinter ball. So it just kind of sounds like a really cute story so that you can revisit some of your favorite characters from Sorcery of Thorns, and that they're just trying to break this curse so they can have their midwinter ball. It sounds cute, but everybody I'm sure is very excited to get back into this world. Hi. Can you go see daddy? He's upstairs. Yeah, thank you. The next one that I'm anticipating, even though I haven't read the first two, but I really plan on reading them soon, probably in January actually, um, would be A Love by Design by Elizabeth Everett. This is the third book in the series, The Secret Scientists of London, and it's one of those Regency romances that has a lot of feministic and funny elements that I really appreciate so far from the ones that I've read. This is the next one in those installments, and I think I'm gonna really love them, especially because it's very science-based, even though it is Regency, which is really cool. So I am really looking forward to this, like I said, even though I haven't read the others, but hopefully I can change that before this comes out or during the month this comes out and just read them all in a row. That would be fun. Um, I think I said this, but this comes out January 17th and this one is following, I don't know if this is a spoiler or anything because I haven't read the others, but it says you couldn't design a better hero than the very eligible and extremely charming Earl Grantham. Unless of course you are Margaret Galt who wants nothing to do with the man who broke her youthful heart. Widowed and determined, Margaret has returned to Athena's retreat in the welcoming arms of her fellow secret scientist with an ambitious plan in mind to establish England's first woman-owned engineering firm. But from the moment she sets foot in London, her plans are threatened by greedy investors and, at literally every turn, the irritably attractive Earl Grantham, a man she could never forgive. George, the Earl, is thrilled that the woman he has loved since childhood has returned to London. Not as thrilling, however, is her decision to undertake an engineering commission from his political arch nemesis. So it sounds kind of like an enemies to lovers. Not really, though, because she hates him, but he seems to love her. It kind of reminds me of A Rogue of One's Own, which I love so much. So maybe it'll be similar, but anyway, it sounds cute, and I'm excited about these, no matter if I've read them or not. They just hold a kind of a special place in my heart now, so I'm excited about this one. Next one that's coming out March 2nd is The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi by Shannon Chakravorty. 
I've never read anything from this author, but she does intrigue me. But the David Bad trilogy kind of intimidates me. But this sounds really cool. It sounds like it just could be a good starting point for me personally and her writing. It says that she spins a new trilogy of magic and mayhem on the high seas in this tale of pirates and sorcerers, forbidden artifacts and ancient mysteries in one woman's determined quest to seize a final chance at glory and write her own legend. Oh, this was the one that was described as Sinbad meets Ocean's Eleven, which just sounds so good. Any sort of Sinbad retelling, I just feel like sounds amazing. So I'm very excited about this and hopefully I will get this at a book box. I can't imagine how I wouldn't, but trying to rely on book boxes a little bit more this year, this coming year, I guess, instead of just buying a bunch of books and then having double copies of it. But I'm hoping I get this. It sounds interesting and fun. And then on March 7th, we have The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. This is book one in the Nightshade Kingdom series. And I really enjoyed Hannah Witten when I read her For the Wolf duology. I liked For the Wolf more than I liked For the Throne, but I'm very intrigued to see what else she comes out with. So I really want to continue reading her works and this sounds really cool. The cover's really, really pretty too. In this lush romantic new epic fantasy series. A young woman's secret power to raise the dead plunges her into a dangerous and glamorous world of the sainted king's royal court. When Laura was 13, she escaped a cult in the catacombs beneath the city of Delaire. And in the 10 years since, she's lived by one rule, don't let them find you. Easier said than done when her death magic ties her to the city. And essentially she has this job like running poisons and she ends up getting discovered and she's taken to the king and she thinks she's gonna die, but the king has another plan for her. And there's a mystery to unfold. So basically she can solve this mystery for the king or she can die. So it sounds interesting. I'm very curious to see the world that she builds. I again, really enjoyed her writing and for the wolf so interested to read this and just continue to follow her as she grows as an author. There's a lot of Regency romance books coming out next year. So the next one would be A Spinster's Guide to Danger and Dukes by Amanda Collins and this comes out March 28th. So this is um, book three in the Ladies Guide. I actually, spoiler alert a little bit, just read um, the first Ladies Guide in December and I really liked it. It was fun so I'm curious to continue the series and learn more about other characters. So I did really like this and I'm trying not to read much about it because I don't want to spoil it if there are characters in the next book that'll be in this book. But essentially it is following Poppy who is living a lie because in order to escape an odious betrothal, she fled to London where she has been hiding as an unassuming secretary, Flora. But when her sister is accused of murder, she cannot stand and let this happen. And so she goes to help solve this murder. And she ends up kind of striking a deal with this Duke to help her, I guess, um, free her sister and his request is that they have a fake betrothal and they hate each other but then they're learning that maybe they've been misunderstanding one another so one of those but it does sound fun but i am curious to get to that once i finish the second one which again i want to do soon another one coming out that i'm curious about is bewitched by laura thalassa this is book one in the bewitched series i've been kind of following her a little bit more since i've started the four horsemen series and i've almost finished the bargainer series kind of like her writing and I kind of like the worlds that she creates so I'm curious about what she's coming out with next um, I don't know if I said this this is coming out April 18th this is a paranormal romance trilogy it says come to me empress it was supposed to be a simple magic quest one that would get a witch like me accepted into the henbane coven I was never supposed to survive a plane crash nor was I supposed to discover an ancient tomb and the beautiful sleeping man trapped inside it so this basically sounds like she stumbles across a mummy, she kisses him, he wakes up, but he thinks that she is his wife um, from when he died that betrayed him, and chaos ensues. If he really is a mummy, and this is like, throwing back to like, Brendan Fraser's mummy, I think this will be fantastic, except that she's a witch. So it sounds very intriguing, and I must know what happens. <laughs> This next one is coming out April 27th and I am actually kind of curious about it and I have this author's first book and I haven't read it yet which I have regrets about but I am curious about this one as well. This is The Thorns Remain by J.J.A. Harwood. First off cover. Fantastic. She wrote The Shadow in the Glass which is supposed to be like a Cinderella retelling, a dark one and it sounded really cool and I was really interested in reading it and I just never got to it. From the author of The Shadow in the Glass comes a two- a tour de force of fairy bargains. Perfect for fans of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, Mexican Gothic, and 10,000 Jores of January. A dance with the Fae will change everything, 1919. 
In a highland village forgotten by the world, harvest season is over and the young who remain after the war and flu have ravaged the village will soon head south to make something of themselves. And basically, um, this girl and her friends go out to the woods for one night of like laughter, bonfire type situation before they have some plans to like make something of themselves. She plans to leave, but then they ends up that the Fae are there and she suddenly finds herself alone and all of her friends are gone. And she has to enter into a bargain to save her friends. So it sounds kind of dark and fun. And yeah, I'm kind of interested in this author. I'm a little bit frustrated that I haven't read anything from her before, like the one that I have like back here. Um, I really did want to read it. And so hopefully I can get to that and maybe get to this one as well. Oh, oh, and in April, I missed one. There's also The Secret Service of Tea and Treason by India Holton. This is book three in the Dangerous Damsel series. This comes out April 18th. And I am very excited about this because I loved the Wisteria Society for Lady Scoundrels and desperately need to read book two. And so this one sounds really fun. This is following the maid, what's her name? Alice. So Alice is a top operative within the agency of undercover note takers. <laughs> And it says, two rival spies must brave pirates, witches, and fake matrimony to save the queen. And if you know like anything about this series, it's ridiculous and crazy and hilarious. And just for that alone, I'm dying to read it because I loved the first one. And then in May, we have Painted Devils by Margaret Owen. This is the next installment in the Little Thieves series. I'm not sure, I believe this is a duology, but I'm not positive about that because I also thought Little Thieves was a standalone and it's not. But this is the next book, Painted Devils. This comes out May 16th. And it doesn't really have a description, but I remember the like little blurb that I saw somebody posted here and it says, um, if you, you're basically following the same characters as you were in the first one. The con artist goddaughter of death and fortune accidentally starts a cult only to face off the deity she made up when it manifests and claims her ex as a virgin sacrifice. So it sounds, just as adventurous and silly and dark as the first one and I'm excited about it. I did really like Little Thieves and while I was kind of disappointed that it was not a standalone, I am excited to get back into the world and these characters. Then this next one, I am so excited about this because I really loved this author's writing in the Murderbot Diaries and they're coming out with an adult fantasy Yes, I can't wait to read it. I can't wait to read it. So Martha Wells, author of the Murderbot Diaries, is coming out with a book called The Witch King. This is supposed to come out May 30th. And it honestly sounds kind of vague when you're looking at the description, but I have such faith in her writing at this point that it's going to be hilarious and amazing. And as you're like looking at the little blurb on like Goodreads, it says, I didn't know you were a demon. You idiot. I'm the demon. <laughs> It just sounds great. It says Kai's having a long day and Martha Wells is Witch King. After being murdered, his consciousness dormant and unaware of the passing of time while confined in an elaborate water trap, Kai wakes up to find a lesser mage attempting to harness Kai's magic to his own advantage. That was never going to go well. But why was Kai imprisoned in the first place? What has changed in the world since his assassination? And honestly, she, this could have no blurb and I could know literally nothing about this and I would read it because I've read most of the Murderbot Diaries, so very excited. This next one comes out in June and it's also an author that I've wanted to read some of her other works but just haven't. And that is The Bonesmith by Nikki Palpretto. The cover looks crazy. It looks epic, like a really dark video game. This is supposed to come out June 25th. And it is House of the Dead, book one. Gideon the Ninth meets the Game of Thrones White Walkers in this dark young adult fantasy about a disgraced ghost fighting warrior who must journey into a haunted wasteland to rescue a kidnapped prince. Yes, all of that. Yes, fantastic. It just sounds so cool. And while I haven't read the Crown of Feathers trilogy by her, I really, really want to. And so this is gonna be super fun to read. I think this is really up my alley. And so I'm very anxious to get to that in June. And then in July, we have a book coming out that I am anticipating, even though I really need to play some catch up. That is Lightbringer by Pierce Brown. This is book six in the Red Rising saga. I have yet to read Iron Gold or Dark Age, and this is obviously after those, but I did, but I did enjoy the Red Rising trilogy. So this is the next installments that follows right after the trilogy. So I'm excited to read it, but 
really need to play catch up before this comes out. This comes out July 25th. I'm not even going to read about it because I haven't read Iron Gold or Dark Age, but I am excited to continue this series. Eventually, I just really need to play some catch up, but I believe he also announced, let's see. Yeah, there is going to be a seventh book. So there's going to be one more book after this, which is daunting for me at the moment, but I'm sure people are very excited. It says it's coming out in May 2023. I know that's not happening because the sixth one isn't even coming out until July, but the title for number seven is Red God. So yes, that is on my radar as well. And then this one really caught me by surprise. This next one is also coming out July 25th, and it is House of Roots and Ruin by Erin A. Craig. I haven't read Small Favors yet, but I have read um, House of Salt and Sorrows, and this is like in the same series. This is Sisters of the Salt book two. And I didn't know that that was going to be a series. I thought all of her books were standalones. So I'm kind of curious about this. It's following one of the other sisters. So this is about doomed love, menacing ambition, and the ghosts that haunt us forever. In a manner by the sea, one sister is still cursed. And this is following the sister Verity. And this is more like plant creepy. So I think it's going to be really fun. It's like following some botanist stuff. So this is going to be creepy as usual with her books, but I think it'll be really good. And I'm very curious about it and I would like to read that because I really liked House of Salt and Sorrow. It kind of caught me by surprise. So I'm anxious to continue The Sisters of Salt. And then for August, we have the fourth Married to Magic book coming out by Elise Kova. And while I've only read the first one, I do plan on reading all of them. So, you know, I'm always anticipating books like that that are coming out. And this one is a duet with the Siren Duke. So this is about sirens, which is really cool because I believe we did we did elves and then she did elves and then she did fae and then vampires and now she's going into sirens. So sirens sound cool. And it says, inspired by the Little Mermaid and the myth of Orpheus and Eurydice. The sea will consume me if given the chance in water as cold as death the duet began. With it, she gained five years of freedom, but her time is up and now she will go beneath the waves and into the hands of the enchanting siren who claimed her as his sacrifice. Sirens are cool. That'll be a cool book. And then we have one that I'm really, really excited about because I loved book one, and that is Foxglove by Adeline Grace. This is book two in the Belladonna series. I don't know if this is a duology or a series, but I did really enjoy the first one. I think I liked it a lot more than I thought it was going to, and I really, really hope that she doesn't do that thing where she does something very different with book two that I really that I didn't like so with all the stars and teeth duology I liked the first one didn't like the second one so I'm hoping that I really like this one this comes out August 22nd I can't really tell you anything about this one if you haven't read Belladonna but Belladonna is basically following um Cigna who for some reason cannot die and she ends up kind of having this odd dialogue with death personified so death is a character and she can see him and other people can't and she wants to know why this is happening. She blames him for a lot of issues in her life and is seen as cursed because everybody around her seems to die. And she kind of delves into this mystery with her new host of when some of them are falling ill and possibly dying. So she kind of delves into this mystery and she kind of recruits death to help her solve this mystery. So this is book two and I'm very anxious to see what happened off of the cliffhanger because it was very intriguing. And then we have another sequel that I'm looking forward to that's coming out August 29th. And that is Never a Hero by Vanessa Lynn. This is book two in the Monster series. First book being Only a Monster. I read that earlier this year and I did, I did enjoy it. And the ending didn't go the way I expected it to. And I actually didn't know it was going to be a series. So I have no idea where this author is going with the story. But I will read it because I liked the first one. And it just says, book two will take Joan deeper into the monster world where treacherous secrets and even more dangers await. Intrigue. All right, and then we get to September, which I believe there's a lot of books coming out in September that I'm looking forward to, so let's just go. The first one is The Scarlet Veil by Shelby Mahurin. This is coming out September 5th, and it is book one in the Scarlet Veil duology. This is the same author as the Serpent and Dove trilogy, which I really liked the first book, but the rest of them kind of fell flat for me, and I didn't enjoy them as much. So I am curious to see what else she has to write and what else she comes out with. And I do want to give her kind of another shot because I did like Serpent and Dove. I just didn't like how the rest of the series went. So maybe this with this duology, it'll be like a better way for her to write. I don't know. But they dark and thrilling vampire romance set in the world of the Serpent and Dove series, which is interesting because it doesn't really get into vampires. If it does, it's not that much in Serpent and Dove. They have like werewolves and stuff, but not 
vampires, at least that I remember. So that's interesting. Oh, and it's following Seely from the Serpent and Dove series. That's very interesting. Yeah, I don't really know much about that, but I'm curious to see what else she writes. I didn't know it was in the Serpent and Dove world, so now I'm a little hesitant. <laughs> but I think it'll be interesting regardless to see this new story that she creates. And then you know, you know I'm excited for this. So I'm not even sure the date has been truly announced, but it's on Goodreads, so I'm going to go with this date. The next book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series is supposed to come out September 12th, according to Goodreads. The title has not been announced yet. I believe it's actually being announced like tomorrow. It's Sunday. I believe it's being announced Monday by Stephanie Garber, obviously, and I'm very excited. I love this series so much and cannot wait to continue, and it makes me very sad that I have to wait a year in between each book, but I will devour it when I get it because I love it. So it'll obviously be continuing the story. If you read The Ballad of Never After, you know where it left off and how heartbroken everyone is. So Stephanie, you better do some uh, magic to weave that story together. And then we have one that I was very curious about because I thought it was coming out last year and then they changed the date to 2023 and that is This Dark Descent by Kaylin Josephson. I've never heard of this author, that doesn't mean anything, but I've never heard of her. This is supposed to come out September 26th and it says, Steeped in Jewish folklore, the Scorpio races meets the Peaky Blinders in this dual POV YA fantasy where the daughter of a famous horse breeder, a black market enchanter, and an ambitious heir must work together to win a cutthroat enchanted horse race. You can't tell me that doesn't sound flippin' fantastic. It sounds so good. And that's truly all I know about it and I am dying to read it. And also on September 26th, we have A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Fazel. I have not read her We Hunt the Flame duology, but I am very curious to read it. I have both of them. I just haven't read them yet. But this sounded so interesting and cool that I'm very excited. This is first in a duology pitched as a King Arthur meets Peaky Blinders with vampires. There's a lot of Peaky Blinders stuff, but that sounds so good. The novel follows a gang of outcasts in a deadly heist led by Arthie to save her tea room, which fronts as an illegal blood house where local vampires can purchase fresh blood. It just sounds unique and amazing and fun and just yes, yes, yes. Very excited about that. Hopefully it comes out in September. I'm always nervous when I do these that they're just going to suddenly change their mind, which I mean they could. And I hope this is true. I hope this is true. In theory, on September 29th, the next installment of the League of Extraordinary Women series by Evie Dunmore is coming out, The Gentleman's Gambit. The synopsis for this book has not been revealed. The cover for this book has not been revealed. I'm not even sure the date has truly been revealed. I know she pushed it to 2023 because it was supposed to come out in fall of 2022 and that did not happen. All I know is that we're following the last of the four women, Catriona, and I don't care because I love the series. I love it so much. It is so, so good. I cannot wait to finish it. I'm dying. I know that she needed time to like really make it what she wanted it to be, which is acceptable and fine and great. And you can take all the time you need, Evie, but also I need the book now. I need the book now and it's okay, you know. She needs to do what she has to do. It's perfectly acceptable and fine. I'm just very anxious to get my hands on book four because I love it. It's so good. I like stalk her Instagram and socials all the time, hoping for the cover reveal or more information on the fourth book. And she probably hates me and is sick of hearing me talk about how much I'm looking forward to it. But I love it and I cannot wait. And then in October, I am looking forward to this release, even though I haven't read any of the series so far. That is Silverborn, The Mystery of Morgan Crow, Nevermore Number 4 by Jessica Townsend. Um, this series is really, I've just been really curious about it. This is supposed to come out October 10th. It's pushed from 2022 to 2023 and I really need to start this series as well. But it's just a really cute middle grade series that kind of seems like Harry Potter, you know, just magical school elements. But the main character is Morgan Crow and I'm sure it's a fantastic series and this one's coming out so I will get it but I haven't read them yet, so hold me to maybe starting the first one in 2023. On October 19th. 
Two Twisted Crowns is coming out by Rachel Gillig. This is book two in the Shepherd King duology and I loved book one. I really really liked it. It was really good. I really liked the magic system with the tarot cards and the nightmare and I'm very anxious to find out what happens in this story and this comes out on the 19th of October and I have so long to wait but I'm very excited and the cover is also beautiful like it was last time. So we're going to continue to follow their story and what happens potentially with everything and I need it now and I won't get it now. <laughs> and the next few I'm going to talk about are say they're coming out in 2023 but there's no month announced so I'm just going to kind of go over those because I don't know when they're coming out so let's just go. Um, one of them is What Monstrous Gods by Rosamund Hodge. The thing on Goodreads isn't even a cover but it just sounds like really interesting. It says they have acquired a YA fantasy novel by cruel beauty author Rosamund, Rosamund Hodge. The book what Monstrous God starts where Sleeping Beauty leaves off. There's never been a bigger buzzword for me in my life, I don't think. I'm sure there has been, I'm being very dramatic. But I love Sleeping Beauty. I love the tale. I love retellings of Sleeping Beauty. I love the Disney movie Sleeping Beauty. I love Maleficent and the dragon that she becomes. I love Prince Philip. I love everything about Sleeping Beauty. And this involves Sleeping Beauty, so I'm already down. And it says, as Laia, a girl chosen by the gods, releases the royal family from 500 years of enchanted sleep and kills the heretic sorcerer who trapped them, only to find that the gods are not as benevolent as they appear and the ghost of the sorcerer she killed may be her only help to protect her life and country. Yes. That's it. Just yes. And then we have A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. This just says fall 2023. And it says, when architecture student Effie wins a contest to design her favorite author's family manor, she finds herself on a remote, crumbling estate filled with disturbing secrets. With the help of a rival student, Effie must unravel a decades-old mystery, but there are dark forces, both mortal and magical, conspiring against them, and the truth may bring them both to ruin. It's very vague and doesn't really describe a lot, but I am somehow intrigued and curious about this, so I will be definitely keeping an eye on that and hopefully can read that. And then last but certainly not least, we have the first untitled book in V.E. Schwab's new Threads of Power series. Um, this is supposed to come out in 2023. I don't know when. I don't know if she knows when or if it just hasn't been announced yet, but I know she was working on writing it. And this is set in the Darker Shades of Magic universe, so I really need to finish the Darker Shades of Magic trilogy before I can get into this. And that's truly all I know about this. It just says the start of a brand new trilogy called The Threads of Power, which will be set in the same world as the Shades of Magic series, featuring new leads plus the entire cast from A Conjuring of Light, which I would not know because I have not read it. But I really like the Ishwab. I feel like everything she writes and does, I enjoy. So I will absolutely read this once I finish the Shades of Magic trilogy. I've read the first one, but really need to finish the other two books. And then once she finishes The Threads of Power, at least book one, she's going to write Victorious, which is a book three in the villain series. I don't know if I'll be able to hold myself together when she announces that that's actually coming out. I'll lose my ever loving mind. And as always, I am hopeful, at least maybe um, naively hopeful, that maybe we'll get some more news on Rain by Cora Carmack. I know that there has been no um, release date, nothing has been announced. Uh, she's obviously still writing, but nothing's like technically in production, as in, you know, ready to come out anytime soon. But I always have a little bit of just hopefulness that we'll get something about Rain from Cora Carmack. I am dying to know how that trilogy ends and it hurts. It hurts to feel like it's never going to happen. I know she said it is and she's got a lot of health issues so she needs to take care of herself and I'm not trying to pressure her but my reader brain needs to know what happens with my characters that I really like. So hopefully we'll find some more news about that. Um, you know I will talk about it if I have news about that but we'll see. And I know Carrie Maniscalco is working on a secret project that she's like hinting about, but I don't know when that's coming out. Well, those are some of the books that I'm looking forward to coming out in 2023. Please comment down below and let me know books that you're excited about in 2023 so that maybe I can add them to my list or my TBR if you just want to continue to further my horrible habit. Yeah, I'm looking forward to 2023 and starting a whole new reading year. I have my new 
always fully booked reading planner for 2023 and this thing is so cool and amazing and I can't wait to start using it and getting pens for it and mapping all of my goals and everything out. It's going to be a great time. But as for now, that is it for today's video. Please like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time. Stay safe and caffeinated. Bye.